<laughs> After the phone call, I started to cry. Jackson, this is the worst time to tell me! This is not how you become a man, Jackson! Tighten up! My mom is the uh, the best doctor. It's not a comfortable experience at all. That is nothing but God. God is real. When God shows his hands so clearly, you can go through anything else. I knew that we were gonna be okay. I knew that Jackson had given it all. I am being watched, like God's helping me. Love God and love people. I just feel very blessed. What's up? Look who we have here! Jackson! Oh, our oldest son! He's alive! He's <laughs> well! He's here! In arm's reach! <laughs> if you haven't seen the video of him coming home, you have to go watch it. He just served a two-year mission. Two years minus four months. If you've seen our past videos, you know why he's gone through so many health problems. Gone through Columbia through this two-year mission. California. He had pneumonia. All of his lips were filled. He had a lip problem that it looked like his lip was gonna blow up. Mm. And most recently, he was coughing up blood for the past six months. We know that you all have been asking about updates. We make sure you watch to the end because we're gonna share the most beautiful miracle. I've cried about it so much already. So keep watching because I want you to hear this miracle. And it is because of your prayers, our prayers, and it's because of God's Grace and hit that thumbs up button guys on this video share it with your friends if you yes. like what we're talking about And if you totally get what we're talking about share it with people that feel like you or feel people that can use this message We want to tell you where we were when we found out he was coming home because we were going to see him until February 1st But we love him. and We're glad he's here to get well. We were at a football game watching Jordan and Tyson and I was videoing on the sideline. You already knew what was going on. <laughs> yeah, you knew called, first. Jackson called me, and I pretty much talked to him the whole first half of the football game. Like, we just sat there and talked in the stands. And I would kind of, like, show him pieces of the game as it unfolded. <laughs> I'm, like, up in the stands. I'm like, look, Jackson! Yeah. Look! <laughs> look. We thought we were going to see him forever. We had no idea what he was about to tell us. Yep. So this was the night before a huge procedure he was about to have. He was about to be put under general anesthesia. They were going to do a bronchoscopy and they were going to take biopsies, do other treatment for the bleeding. And the night before, we just got nervous about you being in a foreign country. The president had the same kind of worries. And he called me and he said, you know, it's probably best that you get treatment in your hometown, you know, in, in the hospitals there in Florida. And he told me this and he said, you're gonna go home maybe Saturday or Sunday. And this is on Friday. It was Friday. Was, <laughs> after the phone call, I started to cry. And I started crying a ton. And I started to think about my whole mission. I know it's gonna end so soon. And after crying for about 20 minutes, I called dad to tell him the news. I was mainly sad because I wanted to complete the two year mission. I was only four months away. I was at about 20 months. I didn't want to be cut short. Cause you know, when someone's running a marathon, they want to run the whole thing. They don't right. want to stop in the middle of the marathon. Right. So, and you know, sometimes when you, like, I, and listen, you've I ran so a marathon, far, right? you've gone and I was, so uh, far. I was hurt running that yeah. marathon, but I wasn't stopping because I knew how hard I'd worked to get there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so this is similar to, to what you're talking about, right? Mm-hmm. Because, because the mission, it wasn't easy at all, but it was, uh, something that really taught me a lot. And I really wanted to get those last four months and to learn all that I could. Um, before I got home to go to college and off on my own. I mean, we had just been talking about, oh, Jackson, this four months are gonna fly by so fast. You gotta use every second you have to teach and, and serve. Every minute you have, it's gonna just fly by. Was, and then it was cut short, days. it yeah. was done. Whenever Jackson called me, it was like 20 seconds before halftime was over. I was like, Jackson, can you call me back? Cause he was like, no mom, it's urgent. I gotta tell you right now. And right then our quarterback threw a 65 yard pass for a touchdown and I have to video it. So I'm sitting here trying to video this huge touchdown <laughs> and Jackson's in the middle of I'm like, Jackson, please tell me later. He's like, mom, it's <laughs> urgent. I'm like, Jackson. And I'm running with this touchdown and he's all, I'm coming home. And I'm like, Jackson, this is the worst time to tell me. <laughs> you know, I didn't really believe him. And then after the touchdown, I teared up too. There was a female reporter down there and I just hugged her. I didn't even know her. 
but she was just there and God sent right there and we just hugged and talked. And well, I didn't even believe him. He told me and I was like, <laughs> come on Jackson, because Jackson is a joker. He likes to joke with people a lot. So after I started laughing, he started laughing. You're not okay. coming home, bro. He's like, yeah, I am. I'm coming home. Like, I am like coming I'm leaving home. like tomorrow or something. And I was like, no, you're not, dude. I was kind of in a fog. <laughs> oh, me too. The next day I was, I, I couldn't even think straight because I was thinking, wow, I'm coming back home. How many times does this happen in life? You set a goal, you set a plan, and you're like, this is what I'm gonna do. But we have to be willing and ready to let that plan change. He took a moment to feel the sadness, let it soak in, feel it, process it, and then he accepted his new reality and was like, okay, this is what's happening now. Let's figure out an answer and move forward. So I think that's huge for all of us whenever things like that happen is, okay, I had this plan, this is my plan, and then God has something different. Put my faith in God and trust that he loves me so much that if this is my new path, it's because this is his path, right? His path is one of love. I've just been admiring his attitude throughout this whole time. Once I figured out that it was real, that's where my thoughts went. It's just like, I hope that he's able to feel like he accomplished what yes. he was there to accomplish because I know the feeling of, of doing something and then feeling like you didn't get a chance to finish it. But there's a regional doctor that the church has that's in charge of all the missionaries that go through any kind of medical things down in South America. And he called me and he said, based upon all of the things that he read about Jackson, he says, they're going to miss him. And he has accomplished what the Lord wants him to and tell him never to feel like he didn't accomplish what the Lord wanted him to accomplish. So I knew that Jackson had given it all. Yeah. But I just want to make sure he felt that way. Satan tries to take any little thing that he can, and that could be the one thing that he would go for, is like, oh, you've had this great mission, and you're going home because you're sick, but now I'm going to hit you with the, oh, you didn't get the finish thing. Friday night, the doctors told us, and Saturday, they said, he absolutely needs to see a specialist immediately, a pulmonologist. Monday or Tuesday, as early as you can. And I was like, listen, we'll do our best, but here in the United States, it takes a while to go see any, any specialist. Kind of special. Usually when it comes to insurance, you have to go see one doctor and then that doctor has to refer you to another doctor. If you're new, we don't have a new patient visit available until November. And like, this is like how it goes. We've just gone through this. And With a pulmonologist, this, we've never even seen a pulmonologist. I don't a know pulmonologist. a pulmonologist. I mean, I know what they do, it's a lung doctor, but. I've never, never met a pulmonologist. Never. They don't have TV no. shows about pulmonologists. <laughs> I, didn't heard, I, I didn't hear about one until, to my problem. Yeah. Yeah, I he never went into until Columbia. I had the problem with yeah. my lungs. Yeah. It was Sunday and 6 p.m. is when we pick up Jackson as I was walking out of the church. When I see people at church that I don't recognize. I always try to go up to them and introduce myself and talk to them. And I saw this little family and they had the cutest kids. And so I went over, started talking with the kids, started talking with the dad. As I got to talking to the dad, he says, I work at the hospital and I see you. And I say, cool. I was like, well, we are going to be looking for a specialist. If you know some doctors around the area, we could use a referral. Uh, maybe you can help us find somebody that might be and good. And get in sooner. And, yeah, and get yeah. in sooner. He says, well, what kind, of, what kind of specialist do you need? And I said, a pulmonologist. And he said, I am a pulmonologist. And I was like, what? Isn't that amazing? <laughs> Isn't that amazing for him to say, well, I, like, I wait, am what? a pulmonologist. That's what I am. <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> wait, what? Later on that day, he called me. Before for Jackson even came home, we're getting contact with the pulmonologist and get an appointment set up. He says, hey, he's like, I'm at work right now, but I would be available as early as tomorrow afternoon or Tuesday to come by, look at his papers, and look through all of the things. Come happened. to our house. Yeah, he was willing to look through the CAT scan that he got down in South America and all of the doctor's reports and everything and his medical records and to take and help us get next steps from that point on what to do. You don't, we won't even believe this. When he showed up, he spoke Spanish. The dude speaks Spanish! He came to our house. He did. What doctor goes to your house? A pulmonologist. He also ended up giving us referrals based upon the doctors that we have in our insurance. We had a schedule for the next day. Isn't that amazing? That is nothing but God. We need a pulmonologist. On his way home, we have a pulmonologist. I just have chills all over me. And he's coming to our house and he speaks Spanish? There's two things. God is real. This shows how he works. It's through people who are good people and willing to offer up their services and their talents and the things that they've oh, worked we're for so in order to serve people. And this is what happens. God connects people like that. I'm blown away. God's hand is in everything. Because of that experience, I knew that we were going to be okay. When God shows his hands so clearly, you can go through anything else. He still has a lot to go through, a lot of tests. I have zero doubt that God is involved. I have zero doubt that we're going to be okay. If we weren't at church, Dave wasn't the man that he is. 
to go and talk to somebody new, to go and welcome them. This other doctor, this brother, was also, like you said, had a heart of gold, mm -hmm. knew what his gifts and talents were for, and willing to share them. Then we would have never seen that miracle. We would have just said, oh, we can't get to a pulmonologist. It's gonna take a few more weeks. When you're doing what you should be doing in, in places where you should be, miracles come, and if you're not there, you don't always see what miracles God could have had in store for you. What blessings God could have given you. There are blessings that God has for you, but we have to be in the right place doing the right things in order to receive them. And God doesn't always bless us in the way that we think we're gonna be blessed. I mean, totally. I could have never thought that that was how God would bless us. Never. But that's that's the way God felt like the need to bless us. It was awesome. When I got home, I said, yeah, we already have a pulmonologist for you. So how'd you find one that fast? He answered all the questions greatly. He's able to give me some advice. That makes me feel like I'm being watched, like God's helping me. Yeah, I'm being watched over. That like God's, he, he's there. He's, he's gonna take care of this. Last week he started getting a sore throat and I thought, oh my gosh, is he gonna get strep throat on top of everything else? Are you <sighs> kidding me? And I didn't want him to have more antibiotics. He's had so many antibiotics in the last like <laughs> couple months even. I did my own home remedy and excuse my hair in the video, but Raina, Caught it on camera. The second half, the first half was even more intense, but you're gonna get a laugh out of this, but he's doing better, no sore throat, everything's cleared up. I mean, he, he was just tested for COVID before he flew here, so we know it wasn't COVID. Check this video out. Taking care of some throat pain here. We have our own home remedies here in the Mills house. <sighs> this is better than any other medicine around, and this is Dr. <laughs> <laughs> this is a cure of cancer. <laughs> We uh, started videoing after the yells and the screams were gone because it would have seemed a little too uh, dramatic. I love you, Mom. <laughs> These are his final days. This is better than any therapy, any medicine, <laughs> any allergy medicine that a doctor could come up with. <laughs> this is the revolution. He uh, has been coughing up everything, all kinds of gunk that's been sitting there for a long time. It was very pretty. It was uh, quite disgusting. We would have never put that on camera. Yes, ma'am. We would have never posted it. This is the this recovered is home version. Remedy. This is what I'm talking about. This is home remedy. I had to oh, remind yeah. him of his adulthood. This is, what you this is not how you become a man, Jackson. Tighten up. You put general anesthesia <laughs> on me for this. He's Are becoming you? Iron Man right now. He's, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is the process of how you become Iron Man. We put some very am. potent oils. Iron Man. Very, very, very potent. You cinnamon. might say you're an inevitable Thanos, but I am. Inevitable. Iron Man. I am inevitable. I see like in between languages. I want to do this every day. <laughs> you can't get his languages straight. <laughs> it's kind of made him a little crazy for a minute. No one's gonna want to try to talk any sense with him for a while. He's gonna have to recover from this treatment. How did it go? My mom is the uh, the best doctor. She's done more for me than all the doctors have in my whole life. <laughs> Stop. You know, then in Colombia, they put me on antibiotics for a week. This only took 10 seconds. What were the sounds that we heard coming from you? Probably pretty similar to a chimpanzee. <laughs> you say it so seriously. Chimpanzees. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. basically what it sounded like, right? It's not a comfortable experience at all. Yeah. But it's uh, good for you. You know, success doesn't come from being comfortable, is what they say. Success comes from going out of your comfort zone and succeeding, working hard. Not about what you do on Friday, about what you do on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. All right, you learned that from Coach Forrest? Yes, sir. And it's true. We put uh, garlic, some pretty strong oils in here. Cinnamon. Flour, yeah, that, that, that got me too. The cinnamon. Rosemary, eucalyptus. Or was it that like, that was strong? Citrus. It's probably the cinnamon. I would say the cinnamon is what was burning the most. Yeah, this We're going to get thyme oil and oregano as well for you. Okay, uh, does that have to be that brutal every time? Oh, yeah. Uh, if you saw the video of his homecoming, Oh my gosh, Raina just felt inspired and we all felt it. When we heard Jackson was coming home that night, Friday night, she was like, oh my gosh, Jackson is the one that needs to baptize me. So we wanted to show you, we took beautiful baptism pictures of her and we can't show you the whole baptism. Um, we don't video baptisms, but it was beautiful and touching. It's Raina's baptism day. You look beautiful. Thank you. So, so beautiful.
Oh, that's right. We get to show Sunshine Nation all those pretty pictures. Sunshine Nation, today is a big, big day. Raina was confirmed and got the Holy Ghost after her baptism. It was beautiful, beautiful. I just feel very blessed. There's like not a lot of things that you can like, automatically have a feeling that you're like in the right place, right time. Thank you. But this has all just felt like it's supposed to be. It's amazing. We all just felt super, super peaceful about everything. This young lady, you guys need to get to know Raina. Raina is amazing. We love her dearly. How did it feel to come home and baptize Raina? It was good as a way that God was showing me, I'm not done with you. You're not done with your mission. Yes, my mission in Colombia is over. Now I'm, you know, I'm starting the mission of life where I have to study, I have to, you know, make some money, support a family, um, I have to be a father eventually, a grandfather. Whoa, whoa, you know, whoa, brother. It's whoa, crazy. Whoa. <laughs> He's got a little weight on his shoulders right now. He's feeling the weight. Feeling the weight. I'm like, you're an adult. Where's your money? I'm an adult. When are you getting out of our house? <laughs> Just kidding. Just kidding. Yep, remember but. Red's do the first, buddy. <laughs> Just, Just kidding. That's We're going to get him well first. God's time. He's going to help me out. I'm going to be all good. God has everything under control. Yeah, he's got it all under control. He, he's done a great job of showing that through all the little miracles. Yeah. Every little thing he's done is just his way of showing us that. That everything's gonna be okay. Everything's yeah. gonna be completely fine. And we all wanna know, are you gonna be posting on your Jackson Million Productions channel? Since I'm home now, I'm trying to figure out what exactly I'm going to do. What direction you're what gonna What direction, take? yeah. But I'm gonna start posting some videos. Listen, because Jackson is home, now we're gonna be starting back up Sunshine Nation music, so. Oh, and we're yeah. gonna do some recording, and that's too. We're gonna have videos, a lot of, a lot of videos, a lot of videos. And, and not so even on there, but we also have a big one coming with uh, Mariah and Juliana's vocal trainer. We have mm -hmm. all kinds of big things coming, and Lots he's gonna be a part now. of all of that, so we're grateful. Thank you for he's, your prayers, yeah. They, I appreciate them a lot. Prayers make a difference, guys. We all appreciate them. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Know that we care about you, we pray for you, we love you, and God has a plan for you, just like He has a plan for each one of us. And remember, no matter what you're going through, guys, no matter what's going on in your life right now, if you're at the top or if you feel like you're at the bottom, remember that it's really important to love God and love people. That's it. And always look to spread sunshine to those people around you. And yeah. God, will, God will take care of you. He's there for you. We're here for you. And we love you guys. All right? And always remember to spread, spread sunshine. sunshine. Spread sunshine.